Hi. Hello, mate. How are you? Good. Good. That's what I want to hear. Whereabouts are you now? I'm back in Tamaki Makaurau, otherwise known as Auckland. I'm so glad you said Auckland because I had no idea where you said before. <laughs> oh, thank God. I, I was just going to have to pretend and go, yeah, lovely place. How, how was your uh, Christmas? You know, it was pretty chill. Um, it was just me and my mom. Uh, she has dementia and she um, she's confined to a bed now. But look, it's not all doom and gloom. I, I know that sort of sounds like a miserable um, looking scenario, but it really isn't. She, she still has um, hilarious facial expressions and um, says very you know, cutting witty things every now and then. And, you know, we watched lots of movies and ate lots of really great food. And Speaking of watching movies, did you watch the movie Soul? I did. I watched it with my mum. I said, mum, I'm about to be in this um, really beautiful film called Soul. Do you want to watch it? And she nodded. And then I pushed play and she promptly fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> right, put that on the poster. Ray Charles' mum fell asleep during this film. Yeah, she did. She did. And she, when she woke up, she sort of, I could see her sort of trying to work out why that familiar sounding voice was on the screen. And she kept looking around at me and then looking at the screen and then went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 10 out of 10, she gave it. How are you going to be celebrating New Year's? Are you able to go out where you are? You know what? I Ah, no. No? No, change days. Look, I have a very tight um, writing deadline. So I've got to, um, I've got to work. But yeah, I've got a script that I'm writing due in on the 6th of January. So I just have to work all the way through. I might have had some um, good times with friends prior to Christmas to kind of not feel quite so sorry for myself. But in actual fact, I'm fine. I feel like I've had enough New Year's good times over the years to to warrant, you know, missing out. I don't think I'm really missing anything. Also, our New Year, because I'm Indigenous Māori, our New Year was actually in um, June. I'm just asking <laughs> what you're going to do in June, that's all. Yeah. I'm going to ask you about your whole year now. I'll be free then. I will celebrate then, yeah. But the Gregorian, the Gregorian calendar, New Year, um, uh, it, yeah, I can skip it. It's all right. I won't tell anyone if you have a glass of wine while you script write. I will not be. No, I can't do that. I'm such a nerd when it comes to writing. I have to be completely, completely straight. Is that what you're doing today? Because I know we can't keep you for long. Are you working on your script today? I, I am, yeah. And today is my starting day because yesterday was my final day with my mum. So um, today is starting day and um, and I've also got a meeting uh, as well. So, but... And I've already tried to tempt you with a glass of wine on day one. No. What a horrible human I am. Not at all. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's chat about soul. I mean... I watched it again on Christmas Day. And again, thank you for making me cry, Rachel. Cheers for that. I didn't make you cry. That film made me cry. And you were in it, so I'm blaming you. Oh, the film made you cry? Terry doesn't make anyone cry. She's quite aggressive, Terry. She's business, man. She's business, yeah. Uh, see, I'm not business. Anyone that says business makes me cry. I'm that much of a wuss. <laughs> True. It's not only a crier, I mean, it's a Pixar film, it has to be a crier, but it's also just such an important film. I mean, it's the first Pixar film with a black protagonist. How does it feel to be a part of such an amazing monumental movie? I, I just feel so proud. And, and look, I know it should have happened a long time ago. It should have, but we um, have made this film um, well, I sort of feel like I had very little to do with the making of the film, but um, here it is. And let's move forward and keep going. Um, you know, I, 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 Kemp Powers was also obviously integral to the, uh, the tone of the film um, and, and the development uh, within the film as well. He came on at a very early stage, apparently, when it was very, very rough. So um, I'm sure that his input was, you know, instrumental, fundamental um, to, to what we are seeing now. Um, I just thought New York was 
absolutely beautiful. I've never been to New York. It's 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 embarrassing, actually. <laughs> I mean, I sort of feel like I have been now a bit. You know what I mean? I feel like I have really visited a beautiful pocket and a, a very alive pocket of New York. Um, the uh, autumnal colours were just exquisite and put you, I think, in the right frame of mind. Um, the music is just outstanding, John Baptiste, and of course, um, the, the wonderful Atticus and Trent, amazing um, score uh, as we go into the great beyond. But um, yeah, I, I was particularly blown away by New York. I thought it was so lifelike and the textures. And I mean, I saw this, this time when I watched it, I saw on the hospital walls, the detail on the hospital walls was extraordinary even, you know, and, and going into that jazz club. I mean, it's what I've always dreamed New York would be. So, um, yeah, I, I just thought it was, uh, the animation is kind of next level. And I know they had, gosh, I've forgotten his name, but he's amazing, the DOP from um, Arrival and Ava's film, Selma, um, he helped them with, with light. And I think that really shows. Yeah, the moments where he's on the, the bus and the light is shining through the window and reflecting off it, it just the sunsets and that look gorgeous. Oh, so exquisite, yeah. It's one of the most beautiful films and one of the most beautiful characters. We've got to give it to Terry. I mean, this is, <laughs> how do you react the first time you see your Pixar character? Look, I'm, ne I'm not good at watching myself so in, in any way, like even if it's a voice thing. So I do, I always, there's always that initial cringe and you go, oh gosh, could have done better. Or, oh, that's, you know, and also because it's like my voice in amongst all these legends, you know, like Jamie and Tina Fey, and then there's this like annoying, you know. I only watched it for you, Rachel. I didn't even watch Jamie Foxx. No, that's not true. You and I both know that's not true. Anyway, <laughs> so it's me and Angela Bassett and just Felicia Rashad, you know, like, ah, oh, we're Studi, you know, like it's, it's, um, that's so that was, a, that's always shocking because, you know, I'm, I'm just a kid from Aotearoa, well, okay, not kid, but, uh, you know, I'm just a, so, so there's always that initial shock. And then I got in, and then you just get carried away because the story's, the story and the and the extraordinary themes just pull you in and you you forget. I mean, in many ways, when I watched it with Mum on Christmas Day, it was you know despite the fact I was in it, <laughs> I because I I, I, I just couldn't wait for her to see New York, but I also couldn't wait for her to see that amazing you know the the bridge, the sort of bridge, the the that all the little. I just think that's so beautiful when he first arrives on that. Um, one of the most gorgeous scenes I think is where he's falling into it and it, it transitioned to that black and white, like linear. It's, oh my God. It's so gorgeous. That's exactly right. That's the, that's the bit I meant. I just think that that's sort of like neck level animation. Yeah, for sure. Beautiful transition. Did you ever toy with a different voice or different characteristics for, for Terry before you settled with your voice? So when I got the character description, it, it, you know, she it, she sounded very proper and um, authoritarian and um, like, you know, she she meant business and a little bit sort of, you know, um, principal, principal in her. And so I I thought, oh, here I get to play, you know, like I get to have an Emma Thompson sort of accent. I got very excited because, you know, um, it's the great thing about doing animation is you can put on all sorts of different accents um, and it doesn't matter and you, you, can, you can have a play, you know. So I thought I could sort of base it on an Emma Thompson character. Uh, and I, I offered to send in, um, you know, some different voices and I had some ideas, you know. Um, they didn't really stray, stray too far. I suppose from from you know my range, but um, they said no. We just want you to be you. And also, uh, you know, uh, Pete had seen Hunt for the Wild of People, and he really liked that. And I think that's essentially how I got the job is that he he had seen Hunt for the Wild of People, and he really thought that a character like that um, he wanted that sort of character in, in in the film. So so yeah, just just pulled that one out. <laughs> You, you've also done a little uh, 
bit more voice acting with Moana. I mean, if you're going to do two Disney films, why not do Soul and Moana, two of the best ones? You didn't, you're killing it, Rachel. Uh, thank you, darling. And I just, yeah, I look, I, I'm incredibly grateful and, and a little bit, you know, I'm, it's always a bit, uh, you know, not, not shocking, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's a lovely surprise. <laughs> it's a lovely surprise to have been asked to be in both those films. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, it's, it's, um, I do not take it for granted and that's for sure. I loved um, Grandma Tala uh, so, so much. Um, in fact, I have her on my wall. This is my offer. So she's up on my wall. I got, I was really lucky enough to get a um, drawing of her. So, um, yeah, I do love her. And I know that makes me a bit cheesy, but she's, she's just sort of everybody's ideal grandma. Hey? I mean, you say it's cheesy. You love her. I love her. And I had nothing to do with her. So I can't judge you. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon... I listen to You're Welcome at least once every hour. That's no. That's the sort of sad man. Yeah, I know I'm a sad though. You every hour. It's such a banger. It's such a banger. You should do it while you're writing your script. I tell you, you'd fly through that now. No. Have a glass of wine, Dwayne The Rock Johnson in the background. You'd fly through it. It is a great song, and and man, Dwayne performs it so well. We actually did the uh, Māori language version um, over here. Our, our culture, we, we did the, that version over here. And um, yeah, we, we were really fortunate in that we found uh, somebody who, who was, you know, as remarkable. I know that's a big thing to say, but as remarkable in that role. And I have to tell you, you're welcome in Māori sounds fantastic. You should check it out sometime. It's on Disney Plus. Well, there you go. Check it out, but you know, uh, good for you that you sing that every hour. Yeah, then I don't. I didn't detect any sarcasm. Do you ever listen to Where You Are, or is that just your version of Let It Go? Like, do not play that near me. No, I look. I, I, uh, I, I um, you know, I, I've got a friend uh, who lives in LA, and that's the only time that we listen to that. He, he. He'll bring out, um, either he'll put it on his phone or he'll put it on a portable speaker and he'll play that song and he'll, he'll bring it in and put it right up by my ear and I'll just be sort of covering my eyes and laughing. And um, yeah, because it is, I mean, you look, when, we perf when I perform, you do have to go into a particular zone, you know. I think I might have got quite teary as I was singing it because it is a beautiful song. And you know, Oli is, a, you know, she she does a remarkable job as well, of course. But um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. The the I did watch it recently in Māori, <laughs> but it was it was more to hear because I'm not a, a, you know, I wasn't um, I'm not fluent in my language yet, um, so I I I, I tune into it to see you know, how, if I, if my language is, how my language is sounding, yeah. Speaking of Disney, I mean, they've recently announced a million and 12 different projects. And if the rumors are true, they'll probably keep you employed till like the year 2048. I mean, the Moana series coming out. I am a Stingray now. Yes, but I would watch a Stingray version of Rachel House for hours. What I'm saying, and you know, please, um, people block your ears if you don't want to hear what happened to uh, Grandma Tyler, but Grandma Tyler isn't around anymore. She is on another plane, and I'm not sure how useful she's going to be in the continuation of Moana's adventures. So let's 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 just say that it's unlikely that Grandma Tyler will turn up in the series, which is a shame because I I loved it. If anyone can make an emotional story about a mute stingray, though. It is Disney. So I've got my fingers crossed I'll see you again. That's true. That's true. We also have to talk about my biggest crush, Taika Waititi. I mean, I could ask you a million and one things, like what does he smell like? What does he have for breakfast? I could ask you all of that. 
But I want to know what it's like working with him because you've appeared in so many of his projects and I've worked with family members. I'll never do that again. So, I mean, it must be great working with Taika. <laughs> okay, well, to answer your questions, he likes a good scrambled egg in the morning. And um, yeah, and he always smells good. So that's, that's, that's answering your two first questions. Look, to work with Taika is an absolute joy. Uh, I've known him a very long time. Um, in fact, when we were late in our late teens, we first met. So that's, you know, about a hundred years ago. Um, uh, and he, I mean, I think he's brilliant. I do, I think he's absolutely brilliant. Um, always have actually, you know, even when I first met him, he was like the best thing in this, in this not very good play that I, that I saw him in. He was the only good thing in it. And then I went to, I started going to see his stand up comedy, which was hilarious. Um, he had, uh, you know, a little group. There was four of them, including Jermaine and Brett McKenzie and another guy um, as well. And they were, I thought they were absolutely hilarious. Um, and then Taika had this other character that he'd do. He had, he had these crazy um, teeth and he just sort of would get up and do that thing that comedians do where they, they intentionally die. You know, they, they, they intentionally die on stage. So he'd just get up there and be so awkward. And it was so awkward to watch. I wish I could remember the name. It was a lot like that guy from, you know, Taxi, um, What's his name? And he, Jim Carrey played uh, him in a movie with Courtney Love. Andy Kaufman. Yeah. So it was it was sort of like Andy Kaufman. So he'd get up and he'd be dressed in this sort of, from memory, it was like a, a, a weird beige suit. And, you know, everything about him was kind of awkward. And he had these, yeah. And he'd just die. He'd just, he'd just tell all these jokes that would just, that would completely sink. And he had this really... Um, you know, very endearing, awkward voice, not dissimilar to his uh, vampire and, and what we do in the shadows. And he, and I just thought, who is this amazing dude, you know? Um, so yeah, it, I, it's been a pleasure to, to, you know, not only work with him, but also see him excel. Well, that, that's the excuse I use as well. When I do stand-up comedy and it goes horribly, I'm like, no, I'm doing a Taika Waititi. I meant to, I meant to crash and burn there. Right. I recently watched Thor Ragnarok and my God, one of my favorite scenes, I think was a deleted scene between you and Jeff Goldblum, where you're, you're improvising and you're trying to deduce the bill. The bill, the bill. Oh my God, it's so, so good. I can't imagine there's a lot of Marvel films you get to improvise on. What was it like just being around these legends improvising an actual Marvel movie? You know, terrifying initially, but then that's the thing about working with a, a, an old mate is that he, you know, I just thought it was wonderful to just um, feel the way that, you know, that wonderful connection that happens between a, a um, director and, and the actors where you forget, you forget all the other stuff and you just absolutely concentrate on the scene. And that's what... Taika's so good at, you know, he's really good at um, kind of throwing you balls, um, which you have to catch. And so that that it becomes the focus. So what, what Taika does is he will call out. Um, so we'll, we'll have a, he'll have an idea of how he wants, in that particular instance, he had an idea of how he wanted that scene to go. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we we really, I mean, Jeff is masterful at improvisation. Um, and Taika would just, uh, you know, throw in ideas, throw in words. Um, it, it was, yeah, it was it was a very cool thing to do um, with Jeff, I have to say. It didn't make it into the film, though. <laughs> yeah, I have a word, Taika. No, I can see why. I can see why. Because it, it was, I mean, it was very much its own thing, wasn't it? Its own scene and it didn't particularly contribute to the story i don't think <laughs> if it makes you feel better i reckon i've watched that deleted scene more than i've watched thor ragnarok so really <laughs> one nil to you rachel i'm so obsessed with it it's so funny 
it's it's quite ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Speaking of Topaz, I, again, you have to tell me what happened because, yep, you know what's coming in a Marvel movie. Unless you see them die, you don't know what's happened. So we see her ship go down. It rolls about. Where is Topaz right now? What what do you think the fate of her is? I think she's gone as. You reckon? Yeah, I do. I'm almost 100% sure that Topaz will not be seen again. Well, there goes my clickbait of saying she's in Thor Love and Thunder. I am so sorry. Well, no, there goes your clickbait. Thanks a lot, Rach. <laughs> I'm about 99.9% sure that I will not be in the next but there was like a 0.1% chance. So there's still a chance, right? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, you mentioned uh, a deleted scene in Thor Ragnarok. You also had a, a deleted scene in Jojo Rabbit. So what actually happened? What was that scene about? It was, uh, she, so I came in and I, I was playing an, a, an American soldier talking about how amazing, um, we were to come and save the day and aren't we fantastic and we're powerful and now we're gonna make the German people pay for what they've done. So really it was about, um, you know, uh, everything turning on its head and the cruelty, you know, just continuing on and on. And it was it was very clever and meant to be ironic. And, and, and you know, as you know, Jojo Rabbit was an anti-hate film. So it, 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 it definitely carried uh, that, that message within the scene, but it was so unnecessary. Um, I was relieved because, you know, as you know, you've seen the film, it was a very beautiful ending and uh, having a sort of uh, loud gauche, you know, uh, soldier coming in and barking orders i mean it was like a little uh soliloquy really just a kind of 20 second 20 to 30 sec maybe a minute uh little soliloquy um and yeah quite quite unneeded but you know what was needed a little bit of uh acting coaching from you as well yeah that was a, a seamless link there it was a seamless well done yeah. how how does it feel when you see the kids just absolutely kill it on screen knowing that you help them make those amazing performances? I, I mean, I don't really feel that way because I do feel that the kids always had it, you know? Um, Taika is very good at casting um, kids. He immediately recognises the qualities that he's looking for. So, so they already had those qualities, you know? Um, I'm sure that Roman would be horrified if, if I was to say, you know, he's he's a lot like uh, Jojo. But that is what, um, you know, Taika looks for. He wants to make sure that these kids are more or less, you know, they have, they have, they are very, very similar to, to the characters that he's already created. So that's really 95% of the work done. You know, and then it's it, it, me. I mean, because Taika and I have worked together quite a lot. Like I coached on World of People and on one of his earlier films, Boy, which is a beautiful film if you haven't seen it. Um, with and Taika's in it, and he's really good. Um, yeah. So we we have a shorthand with each other. I I know, you know, not to overstep my mark with him. You know, I can't. Um, I shouldn't direct, which I think often uh, has to happen in, in, in some cases. I've, I've, act, I've done some acting coaching on, an, on another film, not nothing to do with Taika, and, you know, was kind of left with the kids um, who had never acted before and was kind of left to, you know, not only coach them on how to how to be actors but also more or less had to direct them and that's certainly not what Taika does you know he he tr trusts me to um go through the scenes talk talk through what's happening within them what you know the characters are feeling at this stage um kind of try it out a few different ways and and then Taika takes over as soon as we get on set 
yeah so it's a it's a good system that we've got in place um so it's my job really to warm them up but you know um yeah the, the it's really a, a just like adult actors it's a it's a beautiful thing that goes on between the director and the actor on set from nazi germany to space another one of taika's projects we have to talk about star wars does he ever text you like as someone who writes and someone who who's been part of all of his projects will he ever just text you and be like what do you think about me making yoda 20 foot tall or will he ever just spitball ideas with you on star wars no no that's not true actually no sometimes he'll you know we'll be sitting around and having dinner or whatever and i mean um he'll sort of say oh, i you know he'll talk about some project and some idea he's had for sure. But no, um, you know, we don't, I think as well, you know, there's just an unspoken rule, really. I don't, you know, mention, I can say, you know, I say congratulations and stuff, but I don't, I mean, you, you, a lot of that stuff is so top secret anyway, that, you know, you, you know, is um, just not to, not to go there with them. But, you know, I am, I just am so you know, Star Wars is, is, you know, one of the, I mean, I just, I remember, you know, I went and saw it with my dad at the cinema, um, I think at least three times, which is a lot back then, you know, um, to go to the cinema three times to see one film. Um, and so we, we were devout, uh, you know, um, Star Wars fans and, and we went and saw, you know, me and my dad went and saw all of them together it was our thing and it was a a, a a huge thing in my world so um for me to have a mate make a star wars film is mind-blowing you know i couldn't be more thrilled um for t he's just yeah he's the right man for the job i'm sure you've seen mandalorian and he you know stamped his style so beautifully <laughs> yeah I'm so excited to see him just have his own stuff. Even from the logo, you're like, this is Taika Waititi's movie. He's going to have his comedy, his abstract weirdness in it, and maybe even his little good luck charm, Rachel House. Who knows? If if I am, you know, in any of his upcoming films, then I would count myself very lucky. But he does not need me. And he, he, he you know, and we're, I'm very clear that he, he does not need to keep casting me. <laughs> There's no pressure from my um, from my end anyway. But if if he did cast you, what sort of character would you like to play? Would you like to be a Jedi or or a Jar Jar Binks character? What what would you like to do? Probably a droid. Oh, great shout! <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love R two D two? What some great roles? I, I've given you a Manta Ray already, and I've given you an R two D two S droid. I'm giving you some great roles in this interview, Rachel. Yeah, man. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for chatting to me. I've really enjoyed this. Oh, thank you, darling. Yeah, it's lovely to see you and have a really awesome New Year's. Ah, oh, thank you. You take well in June. Have have a good time all the way up to June. Yeah, you have yours on the 31st of December. I'll have mine in June. Thank you very much. Have a good one. See ya.